Hi, welcome to the second part of the Atomic Habits book summary. If you haven't watched the first part yet, make sure to watch him first by clicking on the card above. Let's begin. So, we ended part 1 with the fourth technique, temptation bundling, where you link an unappealing behavior to a behavior you really like in the hopes of making the habit more enjoyable. But sometimes, this is simply not enough. Many times, positive habits offer delayed rewards. Like we already mentioned, you don't get fit overnight. However, from an evolutionary perspective, we long for instant gratification. Our ancestors weren't really concerned with long-term returns, but rather focused on more pressing things like finding food. And today, many of the bad habits we've developed offer instant gratification, which make it more difficult for us to stick to good habits. So, to make these good habits more satisfying, we can attach some instant gratification to them. And one way is by tracking our actions and progress, because this gives you immediate feedback and a sense of accomplishment for every action you do. Instead of making things more satisfying, you can also use the power of punishments by using a habit contract. A habit contract imposes a negative consequence if you fail to stick to your habit. Let's say, you want to quit smoking. A habit contract may imply that you pay someone $100 each time you fail to resist the temptation. A requirement for this technique is that you have someone who can hold you accountable, preferably an unbiased, objective person, like a personal trainer or coach. Finally, try to make the good habit as easy as possible to do by reducing friction. You are more likely to run tomorrow if you have already laid out your sportswear the day before. Conversely, you can make your bad habits harder to do by adding friction. For example, if you don't bring in unhealthy food, you can't eat it. The two minutes rule is a great principle that will help you accomplish this. The principle states that any activity that can be done within two minutes can be more easily transformed into a habit. This is because the most important step to adopt a good habit is to start doing it. Think about Newton's first law of motion describing inertia in physics. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. A body in motion wants to stay in motion unless acted on by an external force. So, try to make good habits easier to do and within two minutes. For example, start with reading one page in a book or doing five push-ups every day. In the end you will notice that you will do far more than that. So, this was a short summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. We covered some of the most important principles to build good habits or break bad ones. Let's now summarize the summary. So, it is not because we don't notice small changes that they are unimportant. Remember that small positive actions every day will ultimately lead to big results. Positive change requires patience, so to stay motivated, focus on the trajectory instead of the results. The formation of a habit essentially follows a four-step process where a cue triggers a craving and the craving forces us to act in order to get a satisfying outcome. And the actions that lead to satisfaction tend to be repeated until they become habits. By using the understanding of how habits are formed, we can use the following techniques to build good habits and break bad ones. 1. You can change your surroundings and environment to make the cue more visible for habits we want to build or less visible for habits we want to break. 2. You can set specific implementation intentions so we have a clear action plan saying where and when we will perform the action. 3. You can stack new habits on top of already existing ones. 4. You can use temptation bundling where you link an unappealing behavior to a more attractive one. 5. Try to attach some instant gratification to the habit you want to build. For example through habit tracking that is satisfying because of the instant feedback we get. 6. Use a habit contract by which you impose a negative consequence if you fail to stick to your habit. 7. 
Make the good behavior as easy as possible to adopt by reducing friction. Or make the bad behavior more difficult by adding friction. Eighth. The most important thing is to get started. So, define your habit in a way that can be done within two minutes. Now it's up to you to apply them in real life. So, what are your implementation intentions and what techniques will you try out? Share them below, so this will help you stick to it. Thank you for watching, this was the wisdom of everything. If you liked our content, then feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, or share it with your fellow companions, so we can all make this world a better place. Enjoy your day, get wiser, and let's spread words of wisdom.